this video we will be discussing sustainable sites, credit to, development density and community connectivity. The first thing to mention here is that you actually receive 5 points for achieving this credit. This is very significant since in the previous version of LEED, achieving the same credit would earn you only 1 point. So what LEED is saying here is that increasing density, encouraging development in urban centers and discouraging urban sprawl has such a large environmental benefit that they have given it five times as many points as most other credits. Now there are two paths for achieving this credit. The first is development density and the second is community connectivity. The first is encouraging you to select sites within an existing urban fabric. The second deals with a special situation where the immediate surroundings of the site is low density, but the intent of the credit is still achieved. So let's start with the first path of compliance, development density. You must achieve two things. First, the existing density should be higher than 60,000 square feet per acre. Second, the proposed building should also have a density higher than 60,000 square feet per acre. Let's first give a simple explanation of the concept of density. This is basically density 101. Let's say the site is 10,000 square feet. The option here we build one story over the entire site, no setbacks. So we are building 10,000 square feet of space. And since the density is the building area over the site area, 10,000 over 10,000 is 1, so we have a density of 1. Next, we build two stories over the entire site. No setbacks. The density would be 20,000 over 10,000, so the density is 2. Three stories, we get density of 3, and so on. Now let's build over only half of the site over here. One story would give us density of 0.5, two stories over half the site would give us density of 1, and four stories would give us a density of 2. So what we see here is that in these two scenarios we have the same density. Density does not relate to how high the building is or the shape of the building. It is purely how much you are building in proportion to the size of the site. So you can have two buildings with very different forms and different sizes having the same density. Now let's go back to what this credit was requiring. There are 43,563 square feet in an acre. So a density of 60,000 square feet over per acre equals 60,000 divided by 43,000, which is around 1.4. That is more or less the density of a typical two-story downtown main street. So to achieve this credit, you need to have a density of 1.4. You don't need to choose a site in Manhattan where densities are in, are in the two digits, but rather most urban centers would actually qualify for this credit. Now again, both the existing density and the proposed density should be high. So if you build a one-story big box retail store in a high density area, you will not receive this credit. Next option for compliance is community connectivity. Let's take a scenario where we want to revitalize this area. The immediate vicinity has not had any development and is mostly low density. However, it is in close proximity to the city center. LEED doesn't want to penalize you for trying to be one of the first to revitalize and increase the density of this area. So they've established this path of compliance. If you meet these requirements, you can achieve this credit, even though your immediate surroundings are low density. First, this should be a previously developed site, as opposed, of course, to a greenfield site. They obviously do not want to encourage you to develop on a greenfield. Next, you have to be close to a residential neighborhood with a somewhat high density. 
you basically have to be within half a mile, which is reasonable walking distance of a residential neighborhood. They also ask you to be within half a mile walking distance of some amenities serving your site. At least 10 amenities. These amenities would include things like daycare, laundry, park, restaurant, schools, grocery store, etc. If you meet all these requirements, then you achieve this credit even though your immediate surrounding is a low density area. So this is it for Sustainable Sites Credit 2. Two paths for compliance, development density, and community connectivity. Either one will earn you the four or five points of this credit. To view more tutorials, please visit the Green Illustrated website, www.green-illustrated.com.